So continuing with this lovely big house, I have noticed that the roof at the end is not quite horizontal. Sometimes this happens even though I have put the artwork on the correct curve, sometimes it can go a little bit skew and so I double check and double check and so in this case I have just quickly run the pen on a parallel and I am roughly going to map in what is actually straight. It just was sticking out like a, a sore thumb to me. I didn't like it and I just wanted to adjust it slightly. So there is quite a lot to do, but it's, it's virtually a case of colouring in, really. Now, you can see I've started a little bit there. Um, I'm using a green stone, and I am just dotting it about the trees, adding a, a little half tone, um, going over the bits of clear glass, and also blending into little bits of the diamond work that's already there. It just adds a, a bit of a half tone, a bit of 3D effect going on. Certainly not covering up all the blank glass. When it comes to the houses, um, as I've mentioned before, I use a completely different technique to my other engraving and I like the extreme contrast of light and dark and dark and light and leaving bits of clear glass which I would never normally do as you know. But I find that it is the most efficient way, probably easy if you know me, <laughs> easier way to uh, create the engraving of a house and uh, relatively accurately to, to get all the teeny tiny little details in the background. Sometimes there are uh, little sets of garden furniture behind some bushes in front of the house and behind that is, a, is like a little creeper on the wall. And there's, if you were to try an intaglio engrave all that lot, you would just be left with a pile of bumbled mess and you wouldn't really be able to make out what each thing is because you might be talking about something that's a few millimeters, you know, two millimeters, um, maybe even one millimeter, uh, a little chair in the background. And it's just not clear. But by doing, doing it this way, with this method, you can really get quite a lot of very, very small detail. The tiniest little shape in the background can mean a lot to the person. There might be, for example, a, um, a pot plant that's a particular shape of pot that the, that the auntie, auntie Jane gave them tw 20 years ago. You know what I mean? It's a special pot. And if that tiny little shape is in the background, a noticeable shape, even though it might be two millimeters wide, they will see it. And this is the easiest way to show it. Anyway, there are no pots in this particular picture. It's uh, lots of foliage, lots of creepers, um, you know, creepers up the sides of the walls and that sort of thing. So I've still got the green stone and I'm, I'm literally, obviously, copying what I see in the photograph next to, to the glass, which you, it's out of shot, but I'm just copying and colouring. These are bushes. I mean, I try and, and create movement and 
a rough idea of shapes um, within the bush, if you know what I mean. A uh, little bit tricky, but that is obviously a darker bush that I was working on uh, as opposed to something much brighter. And um, that can be shaded and highlighted. So back to some of the bushes and trees on the other side. Well, this end of the the house. Still carrying on with some half tones. This entire video is sped up. Um, mostly 120%. There's one little section that will be, I think, 140% of um, normal speed. An interesting little hedge along the front. And there is actually a fence effect going on. And just by leaving a few tiny little gaps, you will see the, the effect of, of the, the fence quite clearly. And without too much of a headache. So let's tackle this speckled roof effect. I've got the green stone and I am just holding it quite lightly, running it relatively slowly and just colouring in along the top. And this will slightly soften the speckles. I mean, there are a lot of speckles on the roof. Well, all of them, all the roofs. and But this blends them in a little bit. I'm also just leaving leaving them slightly enhanced, the, the speckled effect. I am enjoying the extreme contrasts that are in the picture. Here I have the diamond bow that is diamond all the way down, which, as you know, we use for carving into the sides of the glass. I'm kind of using it on the side and I am just scraping in some grassy effects. I've just noticed that the upright, um, if you were to draw a line from bottom to top, um, it is now straight along that side. The little bits of grass show between um, the areas and yeah, I'm just pointing out that there's diamond all the way down. Um, but in the photograph there's little bits of grass uh, in between the flowery, bushy little things that's still there. So I'm making sure that I've got those little bits of contrasting texture. You could do this with, um, well, I suppose you could use a, a rat's tail and if you've got a lot of patience. But I don't have a, a lot of patience <laughs> and I just certainly don't have a lot of time. And uh, even even when I was young and I painted a lot, I much preferred to paint very, very fast. I just felt it, it looked more arty and, and it didn't look too fussy. They are still tiny little gaps in between these little bits of 
grass. And in the picture, in the foreground grass, there was darker and lighter areas of the grass. So just a little bit of variety, a little bit of movement. Again, just checking that that upright is pretty much even. So if you were to stand it on a table with a, a set square standing upright, that line needs to be straight up. So adding in some grassy areas in the background, you, you can see I've sort of outlined where I have to color in. The only thing when you are working dry is that you're forever having to wipe away the little bits of dust. So I've actually just filled in that little panel with, with a diamond. You can see a white panel, but I, I decided straight away to neaten the little corners with a rat's tail. A slightly smaller diamond I'm using for this panel. You can see how I have created the, the panel. The panel's ready to, to color in as it were on this part of the house. Anything that you're not sure about at a later stage, you can go back and and if you need to make something dark, use a white Arkansas and polish it. Um, but it's usually pretty straightforward. Now it was interesting, you didn't expect me to do that, did you? <laughs> in the photograph for some reason this window was very very light and okay it probably meant that there were light curtains and the light was reflecting the sky and whatever and you know that window showed up very very white so I decided fine I must do as I'm you know as the the photograph showed and I've made it very very white So here are the very white panels of wall. Well, they're just the wall. And you will see where we left the clear glass for the beams, which now suddenly appear very clearly. Starting to look like a proper house now.
It's quite a biggish diamond for very neat little corners. So that's why I have outlined as neat, neat as I can initially with um, the very small diamond. But what I will do is just double check them all and sharpen the corners with a, a, a rat's tail later on. There was a little bit of white building disappearing into the trees. I really, I don't know what that little triangle is, but it's there and so it's got to go in. A very sharp uh, little rat's tail here. It's a different sort of rat's tail. It's, it's a 1.6 millimeter shank, very small diamond. Um, not as long as the normal rat's tail, but same sort of thing. Very carefully adding in some skinny little window uh, frames. It's important to get the right number of um, panels in the window. So what I've done is I have just double checked the parallel at the bottom of the grass. That's not, that felt sunny. That felt funny saying the bottom of the grass because I automatically wanted to say glass. <laughs> I have to really force myself to say grass. Anyway. Okay, just leveling off so it looks a little bit neater, more professional. So you know how to do that. Just put a pen against a pile of books or an upright stand as, as we have done, as I've showed you in one of the videos. Um, and just hold the pen against the glass and turn the glass and that will give you a lovely straight line, parallel line. Sometimes you're given a photograph that's got, say, like a car parked in the front or you see the front end of a car peeping into the photograph. Remove the car and just make up a bit of grass or something. Um, I would never, ever include a car uh, in the picture unless I am specifically asked to do so. Right, lovely hard rubber again. It disappeared. <laughs> now that area of the house is uh, dark, the, the walls are a darker finish. They're not 
lovely white paint. So I have decided to use this um, quite abrasive rubber, which is an excellent black rubber. And it leaves a lovely hue while at the same time uh, slightly rubbing and blending and softening uh, the diamond work. I'm not pressing that hard, to be honest. It is very abrasive. When you look at the rubber uh, and turn it to the light, it's got tiny little sparkles in it. Very effective also in the trees. It just darkens the the softened area. But be be careful not to cover all the blank glass. I, I really like to stress that in this technique. There must be a lot of blank glass. I know you're all saying, but Leslie, you always say, <laughs> don't leave holes in the glass. It is true. I do always say that. But you just have to do it for the buildings. Now, I would like to use the white Arkansas here, but I wanted to sharpen, when I say sharpen, flatten the top. So as you can see, I'm using the underside of a lovely big diamond. And it is the side that you just about never use. Uh, the only time you would probably use that is on a really, no, actually, gosh, I, I can't even really think of a, a time. Maybe run, uh, grinding down the top of a, a glass or something. But so at the shank end of the diamond, you're going to get really fresh diamonds that have never been used. So that can be used to flatten the top of or even sharpen um, to a point uh, your stones and rubbers. You've seen me using uh, the, um, the white block which is a, a sharpening tool. I forget that I forget that what it's called now. <laughs> anyway, you can get them at hardware stores. It's just a sharpening block. But using the back of a diamond is just as effective. So you saw that I had just cut into the uh, uprights of the fence using the white Arkansas, and now I am doing the same along the parallel parts of the fence. On the uprights, I was I was going just next to um, the diamond, or just leaving a little bit of the shine of the white diamond on the side, and um, it's a really nice fence effect. Makes it instantly 3D. important to just go and look for the tiniest little areas that need a little sharp touch-up. It does make a big difference. And 
and of course these were the the dark um, climbers up the side of the climbers there might just be big bushes in front of it but they were dark with a lot of highlight on the top so using this little tiny rat's tail oh, I can add highlight to the tops of the bushes a bit heavy-handed with the white arkansas I'm just adding in that little side highlight so I might have taken too much um, of the diamond away when I used it I've no, just noticed the half tones um, that I've done uh, in that building where it has dark walls. Um, it's almost like there it's a little bit um, te not textured, but maybe a little bit rough in areas that it's slightly lighter and dark, and I'm just leaving it like, like that. So here I'm once again going over the, the roof. I've just decided it needed to be maybe blended down a little bit more, but it's not really making much difference. I'll tell you what a good burr to use for this. I could have used like a brown stone or a pink stone, which is slightly more abrasive and probably would have done that job um, quite well from start to finish. It's funny seeing creepers on the side of the house. While they look really pretty in in England, if you had creepers on the side of your house in Africa, um, <laughs> they made wonderful homes for snakes and spiders, probably mainly spiders. And you don't really want to go there. <laughs> Because spiders in Africa are quite enormous monsters. <laughs> oh, dearie me. So no, not many people had creepers on the sides of the house. So you can see that I used the rat's tail there to add in some little panes to that light window. And on the other window, it was showing a bit of reflection. 
a sort of a lighter reflection. So I'm just whizzing the white Arkansas at an angle across there, giving it an almost cartoon type uh, window effect. There was that join that I just decided to soften ever so slightly using the white Arkansas. with the flowers that were the sort of little blobs that you saw on the right on the left hand side rather and you see these tall leaves carrying on along the front of the lawn actually and then doing some tiny little areas of half tone bits of grass just for that added something sandblasting I had done prior to the hand engraving and there you have it this is such a beautiful crystal look how clear it is looking through to the back houses and churches uh, things like that to make a lovely subject for gifts for weddings for example so i hope you enjoyed that and i hope you can make use of it thanks for watching guys until next time bye for now